we, we start our uh, next session, and, uh, track two, uh, Data Science for Public Policy. Uh, this session is moderated by Ms. Sana al Hajj, who is a um, uh, lecture, senior lecturer at the, uh, in finance at the School of Business here at AUB. And Sana is an executive, is a founding executive member of the Lebanese Private Sector Network. So, Sana, welcome. And uh, uh, we, you will introduce our speakers. Thank you, Lama. Uh, when my beloved uh, colleague, Dr. Musawi, invited me to be a moderator in the uh, track two of this uh, prestigious Swiss conference, I was honored. I was honored because I had the chance to introduce prestigious and notorious uh, experts in the field of data science and uh, in crisis management. So, uh, as you know, I'm gonna, my, I'm gonna t try to shorten my speech. Data analysis, as you know, plays a critical role, not only in crisis management, but also in public policy development and making government more efficient and resilient. The artificial, the artificial intelligence uh, readiness index of 2022 showed that the USA, uh, followed by Singapore and UK, ranked as top three. Uh, not surprisingly, the UAE has embraced this trend for information passionately and ranked 24. The UAE has also set a national artificial intelligence strategy for 2031. In the MENA region, the country uh, are ranked as follows. Qatar 38, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia 41, Turkey 54, 58 for Bahrain, 65 for Jordan, and unfortunately 75 for Lebanon. So as you see, there is a lot of work that has to be done here. With the use of AI, governments are able to connect with citizens on a level and scale that was, not, that was previously not possible. Through chatbot and mobile application, citizens are able to interact, with, uh, to interact and provide feedback to governments. In crisis management, data analysis can provide valuable insight into emergency situation and help government agency make informed decision. For example, data science is used to monitor weather patterns and natural disasters, as our colleague mentioned, the, the uh, typhoon case in the uh, Philippines, uh, to predict their impact and prepare for emergency response. In addition, it helps monitor or track disease outbreak and identify high level and identify high risk area for targeted interventions. Monitor traffic patterns during emergency to optimize evacuation routes and reduce conjunction. According to BCG, data and AI has a role in every step of public, develop, of public policy development in identification, formulation, adoption, implementation, and evaluation. Data analysis can improve the development of public policy by identifying trends, evaluating the effectiveness of existing policies, and predicting the potential impact of new one. Data analysis can be used in identifying patterns of economic activity and help in promoting decisions related to tax evasion, fraud detection, and regulation. For example, AI can assist in improving tax administration and compliance by automating the processes, detecting fraud and evasion, and enhancing transparency and accountability. Countries are already using AI to analyze large volume of tax data and identify anomalies, risks, and opportunity for revenue collection. Data science is all you use to evaluate in public policy to evaluate the impact of social programs on poverty reduction and economic mobility. Scientists, for example, are using AI data mining capabilities to combat poverty worldwide. By using satellite imagery and AI, researchers are able to locate and track impoverished regions, measure their development over time, and target intervention and resources more efficiently. In addition, data science or data analysis can be used to analyze crime statistics to improve public safety policy and law enforcement. Police in Vancouver, British Columbia, for example, are cracking down on burglary with a machine learning solution that uses an algorithm to deconstruct crime patterns. Through spatial analytics, police can predict where, residen where residential break-ins will occur and place patrols accordingly detect cyber attacks, terrorist activity, and enhance national security and defense. 
Example, IBM Watson for cybersecurity analyzes millions of data points from various sources to identify threats, such as malware, phishing, ransomware, and denial of service attacks. Ivan Watson can reduce the time required to investigate a security incident from one hour to less than a minute. Evaluate the impact of COVID-19 on the economy and develop decisions related to economic stimulus packages. By analyzing employment and GDP data, the Canadian government was able to target support to the sector and, regions, and the region most affected by the pandemic. Data analysis is used to track public opinions and enhance decision-making related to election and public referendum. For example, a machine learning and, and big data analysis-based opinion tracking method was used to accurately predict the outcome of the 2019 Argentinian election, whereby, Albert, uh, whereby Alberto Fernandez won a large victory over his opponent, the, the incumbent president, Mauricio Macri. To conclude, data analysis can help government agencies operate more efficiently and build resilience by identifying area of waste, improving resource allocation, and optimizing operation. For example, data analysis can be used to optimize transportation system to reduce congestion and improve transit schedule. Analyze energy usage to identify areas of waste and develop energy efficiency initiative. Monitor supply chain data to improve procurement processes and reduce cost. Overall, by leveraging data-driven insights, government can make better decisions, allocate the resources more efficiently, and ultimately better serve their citizens. And now, allow me to introduce to you Dr. Rima Turk Aris, senior economist and a very close friend of mine. Sorry. Uh, uh, Rima Aris, senior economist, who joined the IMF in 2013. Since then, she has been working on a range of assignments covering advanced economies, frontier and emerging market and low-income countries. In the IMF strategy, policy and review department, she was a lead contributor to the IMF strategy on fragile states, and she reviewed arrangements for numerous countries, including Tanzania, Chad, Egypt, Jordan, and Tanzania. She was recently appointed as the IMF president representative of the Comoros. Prior to joining the IMF, Dr. Terk Aris was a tenured professor in finance at the Lebanese American University and a regular visiting scholar to the Bank of Finland's Institute for Emergent Economy and the University of Strasbourg, Ecole de Management. She has published extensively in top tier peer referee journal, including on financial markets and stability, on trade diversification, corporate debt limits, and private sector investment. Dr. Terk Aris is an AUB graduate and holds a PhD in finance for, from Cardiff Business School. Today, her presentation is on supporting economic and financial policy. Her presentation will include an overview of how the IMF uses data to assess the economic and financial health of its membership, analyze trends, and inform policy. She will also shed light on some elements of the IMF risk assessment framework for countries' vulnerability. So please help me in welcoming Dr. Terk Aris. Rima, the floor is yours.